We are back with my co-host for the day. This is Mila Kunis, everybody. I like the title. Yeah, co-host, you like yeah, that? Really, this has been really fun. This is easier. The, the, when you've, you've guest hosted for me before and you were oh, yeah. nervous, you said. That was awful. Are you nervous now? A little bit. Yep, he lives there. <laughs> yes. By myself? Yes. Yeah, I'm not nervous. I don't need a shot of tequila. <laughs> Get it back in there. No. Ah! No. <laughs> okay. Bottoms Just up. Bottoms up? Bottoms up. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> All right, thank you. It's like a weird cousin it. Uh, is it, it is, is? yeah, like it is, hand. exactly. Hey, um, you've been here many times. What is your favorite memory of being here? Um, do, okay, remember the time, I was trying to figure out what it was, but it was Bad Moms when Cable and I were doing it together. Um, I was pregnant really early. I was like maybe less than two months pregnant with my son at the time, so I was a little hormonal. And, um, and Ashton came out to surprise, like Ashton and Dex came out to surprise us. It was a Mother's Day show. Yes. Yep. And I had, I got really emotional. And my joke was like, I don't know why I'm so emotional. I saw him 20 minutes, like I just left the house. And then like he appeared, but I think I was so hormonal and it was so overwhelming that I literally had tears. And I was just like, oh my God, I don't want to cry right now. But I was, I just saw him 20, like we, I just left him. And it was, right. it, but anyways. But nobody good. knew you were pregnant, but that's why you were so emotional. Yeah. yeah. It was, it, but yeah. then it, I was worried about like who was watching our daughter because then I was like, oh wait, there's nobody at home. Like I did have a thought of like, oh, is she here? And then like, I looked around, but anyways, that was probably my favorite. Yeah, well, it was yeah. sweet. Yeah. Yeah, because remember, I don't know if you remember the first time, I, no, not the first time, but w later, early in our, but first time in our relationship when I, when I talked to you about it and you're like, are you dating Ashton? And so to me, this was like a nice little button to that. Because I think the first time I talked about dating him openly was also on your show. Yeah, I, I get things yeah. out of people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, s speaking of that, uh, you, you revealed something that, uh, that kind of blew up. A, a lot of people are talking about Ugh. your bathing habits. It's, it's so you dumb. and Ashton, your children, apparently you don't bathe them. Um, we bathe our dogs, does that make people You happy? do bathe your dogs more often than your children. Fact. Yes. Yes. Um, I know, this, this was, this was, <laughs> I went on, um, speaking of Dax Shepard, it was on Dax's podcast, and we were doing press, I think I was talking about stoner cats. But somehow the, the conversation derailed into bathing habits. And then we started talking about that we all don't bathe our children very often and or ourselves. Like, why well, shower every day, but I don't like wash my hair every day. Like, I don't find that to be a necessity. I tr my intent, and Twitch and I talked about this earlier, my intent every day is to bathe my children. I wake up every day and like, today I'm going to shower my kids. <laughs> and then bedtime happens and I forgot to feed them. And <laughs> it's just like, there's just some, anyways. Cut to a year later, Dax is doing press junket for something completely different, and the reporter decides to ask him, like, you know, this whole thing's been circulating about Ashton and Mila not showering. What are your thoughts on it? And he was like, I'm the one who started this conversation. So, like, this whole story is now taking such a turn, but apparently The Rock showers, so congratulations, The Rock, you shower. <laughs> like, yeah. Jake Gyllenhaal doesn't. Jake Gyllenhaal doesn't shower. Yeah, there's all these celebrities that are just jumping on board of if they I mean, shower, they if they shower, don't. Ellen. Right, but it's mainly about the kids don't really shower. The, the kids, we, the, there's a body of water that they touch uh, just about every day, <laughs> almost every other day. A body of water? Yeah, sometimes it's the pool. Sometimes it's a sprinkler. Uh -huh. Like it just depends on what they. It's COVID. It was like who showered in COVID? We didn't leave the house. Who cares? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I don't think I made the story any better right now. I feel like this is going to take like, a, well, no, a whole other turn. Yeah, because you added to it that you forgot to feed them. So now, <laughs> so now you've added that. I feed my kids, okay. guys. Oh, God. All right. No, I know you feed them. They're, they're good, healthy kids. Thank you. All right, let's talk about the Stoner Cats. Let's okay, talk about the wait. animated show. Yes, yeah, so okay. Stoner Cats is a, it's, it lives like in, under an umbrella of a company that I started in COVID. That's our little Stoner Cats, and it's like Jane Fonda and Seth MacFarlane and Chris Rock, myself. Ashton, and um, we started this show as an NFT, and the idea behind it is, you know, conceptually, we've been so, we've watched content the same way. Like, we used to watch it 6 to 8 p.m., you were given broadcast shows, you'd sit with the family and watch it, and then it evolved into cable, and then you were given access to cable shows to watch. 
then it began binge watching, then you were given access to binge watching, but it was all very much a, the same viewer. Like you watch it, you kind of, you, you consume what you're given and that's it. And so I, kind of, I wanted to create a platform where you felt like you were part of a community where watching content felt more like you had ownership in it, where there was, it was art involved, a metaverse. And so it, it all felt like it was bigger than just consumption of content. And so we're building this platform around it. And the first thing that we put out was um, Stoner Cats and there's NFTs behind it. And a Stoner Cat NFT essentially is like your Willy Wonka golden ticket to access the rest of the content that we'll be putting out. I understood a lot of that. Um, so <laughs> let's, let's, there's a, a clip. So let's. Oh yeah, clip. so this is, so this is a cute little, I brought a friend with me. And so the friend's in the, um, in your dressing room right now. Oh. And so we can just cut away to your dressing room and see well, what's happening. Let's see what this is. That's yes, me, Ellen. That's me. Look at you. That's well, Fifi. I, she's cute. That's adorable. Yeah, it's a very sweet show. It's um, it deals with or it's it's about a woman who it's early onset Alzheimer's essentially, and so she's kind of self medicating through uh, something, and um, and the cats all of a sudden get a whiff of it, and they can walk and they can talk and they have um um observation on life now. Wow, it's very sweet. Yeah, yeah, very sweet. All right. Uh, to find out more about Stoner Cats, go to our website. We're going to play Burning Questions with Mila after this.